Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. This year, believers who observe the World Day for grandparents and the elderly will receive several indulgences. In a decree published on May 30th by the Apostolic Penitentiary, it announced the indulgences for the Day of the Elderly, which will be observed in the Church on Sunday, July 24th. The elderly and the faithful, who take part in the solemn celebrations presided over by the Pope in the Vatican or similar celebrations around the world, can avail of the plenary indulgence. Even the sick and the elderly, who are unable to travel but unite themselves spiritually with the liturgical celebrations that day, can gain the indulgence. To be eligible for the indulgences, believers must go to confession, partake in the Eucharist, and pray for the intentions of the Holy Father. Pope Francis established this particular day for the elderly last year, and it is observed on the Sunday close to the feast of Saints Joachim and Anne, the grandparents of Jesus. The culture of death has gripped Belgium, where almost 27,000 people have been euthanized ever since assisted dying was legalized 20 years ago. May 28th marked the 20th anniversary of the legalization of euthanasia in the European Union country that has a population of 11 million. Pro-life supporters allege that euthanasia is administered to people who undergo any type of suffering or psychiatric ailments, including autism and depression. There are also scores of cases where euthanasia was administered to those who did not ask for it. In 2002, when euthanasia was legalized, there were 24 cases. The following year, it went up to almost tenfold. In 2020, as many as 2,444 people were euthanized. The number rose to 2,699 in 2021. It is also alleged that in 16% of cases, assisted dying is given to patients who are not expected to die soon. The Holy Father has thanked the International Catholic Migration Commission, or the ICMC, for its stellar work spanning seven decades. In his message to members of the Commission on the occasion of their plenary council, Pope Francis made a special mention to their help to Ukrainian refugees. The Pope said the Commission has helped churches respond to the challenges posed by displaced people. Founded in 1951 by Pope Pius XII, members of the Commission convened to choose a new governing committee, approve new statutes, and determine its operational guidelines. Pope Francis said that ICMC has had an ad intra and an ad extra ecclesial mission. At the ad intra level, the Commission offers assistance to bishops' conferences and dioceses while facing the issue of migrants. At the ad extra level, the ICMC responds to global challenges and migratory emergencies in solidarity with the local church. Members of the Spanish soccer team Real Madrid offer their Spanish League and Champions League trophies to Our Lady of Albodena, the patroness of Spain's capital, on Sunday, May 29th. Upon returning from Paris after winning the Champions League for the 14th time, the players, coach, directors, and the club members went to the Almudena Cathedral where they raised their trophies before the altar of Our Lady. They were received by the Archbishop of Madrid, Cardinal Carlos Osoro, welcoming the players with affection. The prelate stated, quote, It is stimulating to share a path with others to support each other in the search for success, end quote. The president of Real Madrid, Florentino Perez, conveyed his gratitude to the prelate for welcoming them. Following the address, Emilio Butragueño, director of the Institutional Relations for Real Madrid, prayed for all athletes and for everyone present to obtain, quote, the maternal protection of the Virgin Mary, end quote. The club has a tradition of offering its trophies to Our Lady of Almudena. In the U.S. Archdiocese of Detroit, there will be a grand Eucharistic procession on the Feast of Corpus Christi on June 19th. 
This is being held to herald the launch of the National Eucharistic Revival, a three-year initiative in the American Church to foster greater devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. The procession will begin with the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament at the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Detroit and will be processed around the city and conclude at the Sacred Heart Major Seminary where there will be a benediction. The National Eucharistic Revival, started by the bishops of the United States, is a three-year grassroots movement. The diocesan year of Eucharistic Revival will begin on June 19 and concludes on June 11, 2023. The second and third phases comprise a parish year of Eucharistic Revival from June 11, 2023, through July 17, 2024, and a National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, Indiana, from July 17 through the 21st of 2024. Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, Archbishop Pier Battista Pizzaballa, reminded believers in the Holy Land that the life of the Church is life-giving when it stems from encountering and loving Christ. He made the statement while delivering the homily during the Thanksgiving Mass offered in Nazareth on Sunday, May 29, marking the canonization of St. Charles de Foucault. The French-born mystic and hermit had lived in Nazareth for quite a while. The patriarch said that to love Christ means to love man where he is, as he is, by being close to him, just like St. Charles, who lived among the Muslim Tuaregs in Algeria. The top prelate reminded believers how the saint bore witness to the love of Christ among the Muslims. The Mass was concelebrated by Monsignor William Shamali, the Vicar General of Jerusalem and Palestine, and Monsignor Rafik Nara, Patriarch Vicar of Israel. Also present were Bishop Emeritus Bolus Marcuzzo, Maronite Archbishop Musa El Hagi, and Melkite Archbishop Yusef Mata. Cardinal Jose Advincula of the Manila Archdiocese has urged the young Filipino faithful to resist the proliferation of fake news. During a May 28 Thanksgiving Mass for the canonization of Dutch Carmelite martyr Titus Bronsma, the prelate urged the youth faithful to use social media platforms as pulpits to combat false narratives amid the country's, quote, crisis of truth, end quote. Emphasizing that truth is at risk, the Cardinal stated, quote, If there are forces that use social media to deceive and spread lies, let us combat them by flooding it with the truth of God's word. Remaining apathetic and silent is a sin, end quote. Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines Archbishop Charles Brown, members of the Carmelite Order and delegates from the Netherlands Embassy participated in the Thanksgiving Mass, which took place at the Cubao Cathedral in Quezon City. The prelate urged the faithful to be inspired by the saints, quote, unwavering pursuit of truth, end quote. St. Bransma is the titular patron of the Carmelite Order in the country. Archbishop Ignatius Ayao Kegama of Nigeria's Abuja Archdiocese has condemned the reported political malpractice in the party primaries ahead of the upcoming presidential elections of February 2023. Decrying the misconduct during his homily at the Mater Dei Parish on Sunday, the prelate stated, quote, the party primaries held by some political parties have left many Nigerians flabbergasted and sad. Instead of demonstrating love for democracy and exercising their civic responsibility, money was said to be the major factor, end quote. Archbishop Kegama deplored the bribing of voters by candidates ahead of the polls. The Archbishop lamented that the leaders who are honest, God-fearing, and able to manage Nigeria with prudence are being ignored for those who have paid for their way up. The prelate further advised the country's civilians to elect their leader and not be swayed by money. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.